Hello, this is Real World Audio and I'm going to share something really special today and uh, this is going to be about my beginning of the audio journey uh, and I call them my hamster wheel years because uh, this was at the time when I was uh, in high school and in university and uh, and of course I got exposed to all kinds of uh, hi-fi magazines and audio literature and uh, and of course as everyone who starts to uh, buy these magazines back in that time nowadays people just uh, watch reviews of course you just get stuck in a hamster wheel that you are just looking for the next review to find material to dream about and uh, and I also would call this experience as audio reviews and reality like how the two meet what, what is the reality and what is the picture that uh, uh, you get from audio reviews I don't really want to generalize from this but I'm going to share my experience what was the impression I got of audio equipment from the reviews and what was the reality when I experienced those audio gears so instead of someone reviewing it and I'm reading that well, how was it to hear it so this was my reality this is how I started audio in my high school years I got a I had a Yamaha KX390 KX cassette tape deck and a Sennheiser HD 525 headphones that was all that my budget allowed and uh, guess what I was extremely happy with this setup it uh, it played uh, music at a completely different level than a than a boombox or stuff coming from you know just generic equipment and I was super happy of uh, taping material from the radio and uh, friends loaning me cassette tapes and I just you know copied the cassettes or or just uh, when the CD came out this was during the time uh, when a CD was just born and it was just something like uh, barely anyone had a, a CD player and I copied that really truly magical format that we were we had so much expectations about and and I was really shocked that uh, actually the CDs were had a lot of promise in them but when I listened to a CD it was very much disappointing I, I expected much much more of them but of course you all know about the early years of digital and uh, they were not that much different from from today <laughs> i would say uh, certainly digital has gone a really long way in certain uh, terms or certain areas uh, yet what i have experienced back at that time is that when we listen to a cd from a dedicated uh, CD player that always sounded inferior compared to the tape transfer that I made with this deck from the CD. The tape transfer, despite the uh, background noise, sounded always more natural, less fake than the original CD. So anyway, I was still dreaming of getting something more because all the reviews and hi-fi magazines they promise that there's a reality out there with much higher resolution uh, much better transparency and so on than this really modest setup can give before I go into that I really have to add that uh, uh, this setup although today I mean, I think most audiophiles won't even consider it as an audiophile setup or as anything serious but it uh, it gave me profound experiences and uh, 
and and it was just uh, one of the best systems I had during my audio journey. I still have it, but at my parents' place, uh, and uh, that's quite a few thousand kilometers away from here, so I don't really get to listen to it. Uh, maybe once in in ten years. Uh, so. This was my plan, which was fueled by the reviews that I uh, was reading in the magazines. Um, Bauer Wilkins, yes! All the, all the papers were full, loaded full with BMW speakers, how great they are, how amazing they are. And I thought, well, these are the DM302s, the bottom line, you know, the cheapest, barely even considered audiophile. And I thought maybe, maybe I one in one day I could afford them, and it, they would be so good. But it's just kind of like something, like like an entry ticket, a ticket to the audio world. And and there was this company that I was really fascinated with, based on the reviews, Micro Mega. And. Uh, and every review said that it just uh, sounds so natural and even though it, they have uh, these uh, the transistor amps it the transistor amplifier the solid state amplifier sounds almost as natural as vacuum tube amplifiers and its cd player sounds so much better than uh, than other cd players in the price range and they had this series called the Minium, which was their entry-level series. Uh, and I thought, wow, maybe if I save up enough money, that would be just such a wonderful system to have. And then I thought that maybe if, if I get a great job and I have tons of money and, you know, I have... Uh, uh, my house going with the down payments and I have a you know a car and, and things settled in and family whatnot then slowly I can continue with saving up for some heavier duty gear like some serious rotor amplification and and the heavier rotor CD deck and now I'm talking about the year around late 90s uh, early 2000 that's the time scale when I I was there and I had such dreams late 90s and um, and then of course that was my final dream to get also some more upscale BMW loudspeakers to go with those amazing rotor system and that's probably that will be audio heaven and and this was uh, up to this point my expectation from audio reviews that uh, based on what I read this is this has to be the way to go and of course the ultimate plan was from these reviews is to upgrade to this Swedish brand this is what I had my eyes on electro company and uh, it had just like raving reviews everyone was going that oh this this is on a completely different level than the rest of the equipment f compared to Rotel or anything else, but of course it's very expensive, so that was really like a end case scenario, of course with Martin Logan speakers, uh, which were spoken of extremely highly, and, uh, and of course one has to dream. So this kind of looks like my... Uh, final journey. This is how I imagined when I was in the hamster wheel. And meeting reality, uh, to my surprise I found an audio store in my college town where I went to university and uh, roughly this is the system that I listened to. So this was my first true experience of <laughs> hearing a halfway audio file system because this setup is really kind of like an introductory system to a, a low level or the bottom rung of the audio file scale 
which is that Bauer Wilkins uh, 302 loudspeaker. I think my camera is not very good here. Let me just change the angle. Can we see that? Yes, we can see that. No, 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 no. I have to just adjust again. I'm apologies for... Bingo, I think it right. Probably this is how it looked like in the first place. So there it is, bottom line, BM, Bauer Wilkins speakers, NAD 3100 series amplifier. I don't think it was the exact same uh, that I listened to, but it's the series that it's been in constant production for many, 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 many decades. And bottom of the line, Rotal CD player, or maybe it was an NAD CD player. I don't recall that. This was 25 years ago. So anyway, I heard roughly this system with basic Van der Nool cabling and it just blew my mind. Of course, this was set up by a professional audio salesman who was extremely knowledgeable on equipment setup and systems matching and it was just amazing. I listened uh, large scale orchestral music on it and all kinds of stuff and it was just amazing with everything. No subwoofers. So it had just these two speakers and uh, on paper they go down maybe like to 70 hertz or 60 hertz. It's kind of like a joke. Uh, so, so based on the paper data, they should not have any bass at all. Yet, even, they played even full orchestral works with uh, amazing weight. Uh, compared to what I would have expected. And it, it was just a shock to me that I uh, never heard an audio file system and it just played everything correctly. Of course, already at that time, I noticed that uh, I could have much higher detail level and so on and so on, but it did not make any mistakes, any big errors. Uh, the tonality was uh, right uh, and it had everything in, uh, in, in proper measures. It had a pretty good imaging. This, by the way, this was the first time in my life I have ever heard three-dimensional sound stage and not just a wall of sound. It was just a shocking experience and it, I could really enjoy a full orchestral piece in this system. And not once was I thinking to add a subwoofer to it, BS. So anyway, this was just a fantastic uh, uh, thing to meet and that really uh, made me expect that when I go for the higher scale BMW loudspeakers, it will sound much better. When I step up from the net to the Rotals, because basically the Rotal uh, amplifiers are kind of like upscale NADs. <laughs> and when I go for the higher and rotor CD players, if I continue with that, then surely I will have my dream set up as the uh, magazines and the reviews have promised. And um, shortly after I heard this setup, then I heard at the same gentleman's uh, stereo shop, the Jadi Orchestra. This was the first tube amplifier I have heard. And um, so the Steve Gutenberg, the audiophiliac, has made done recently a review on, on the Jadi. They have like a anniversary edition now. So, and, and it's been in constant production for well over 20 years. And by the way, those of you who don't know this brand, the orchestra is the uh, introductory model of Jadi. So this is the baby Jadi. All of the other Jadi are way more expensive than this and uh, this is just an integrated amplifier. Uh, the other solutions are uh, power amps and preamps that Jadi has. And, uh, and by the way, just to let you know, the Jadi Orchestra is not just an amplifier, but it's a whole system. So there's the orchestra loudspeakers and the orchestra CD player. 
and this gentleman he had the full system in his store and he had them hooked up with the uh, Van Den Hul cabling and uh, he apologized to me because he said that those cablings I am that that I heard them with was actually uh, quite above the range of this system so they were high and uh, Van Den Hul cables not mid-level cables to match this system and that was because he was planning on setting up the big Jadi system and he already pulled the cables for that I was just lucky to hear the orchestra before he took it apart and, and started assembling the big Jadi and, and the orchestra sound that, that, that was just from a totally different dimension compared to what I heard with this experience it, it, it was nothing less than a revelation it, it was just totally insane by the way I heard them in the same room uh, both of these systems and, and this kind of like really uh, bugged me a little bit because I really set my mind before that on transistor systems you know I was a young guy uh, very much into computers computer programming I believed with everything, you know, that vacuum tubes are passe, they are just, you know, maybe like 50 years ago that it was a thing, but they, it's just so outdated. There was so much more development. We have transistors today, modern amplifiers. This is old shit. And, and I had all my religion thrown in my face. All my religion of newer is always better BS that we are dealing with every day and by the way I'm dealing with the same crap with my computers at work I had an old PC and uh, which was running uh, barely something above uh, Windows 95 <laughs> it was really old uh, uh, workhorse and uh, and it was upgraded to a modern PC with more memory, latest version Windows operating system, and I'm running the exact same applications on it uh, that I need to run, which is like a internet browser, PowerPoint, Word, novel, group files, and stuff like that, and uh, and a couple more programs. And to my great disappointment, this system, which is at least 10 generations uh, more modern, crashes 10 times as much and, uh, and is much slower. I find every day that I'm frustrated with it, uh, it has problems, it wants to restart itself, reboot, all kinds of crap. And uh, that's just another think that the advancement in technology is not always uh, in the better in every aspect uh, direction because of course this newer computer can do things the other couldn't do but the things I need it to do it has it is not living up to stuff up to snuff with what it should be doing provided there was 10 years of development and and the same thing happened to me realizing that guys vacuum tubes they they just represent so much more and 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 we were just the biggest idiots to ever think of going in any other direction than that and of course well, at this point, I have not heard yet the big rotas and the bigger uh, Bauer Wilkins loudspeaker, so I still had hope that what I heard was just, you know, the introductory NAD model competing to a tube amplifier. But also, I knew at that time that this was just the introductory bottom basement model of Jadi. So, whatever. Uh, can it get any better than that? I really wondered. And then this was my final dream. The uh, Nautilus, Bauer Wilkins Nautilus, which I honestly believed must be the best loudspeaker on earth. And it was my dream. It's, it's just like 
like like from a sci-fi project and every scientist dream to have something like this you know the last frontier in science sitting in your living room driven by the most modern electronics and uh, sadly what happened is that uh, i met the nautilus and i had the experience to listen to it and it just totally demolished all my dreams however it did something really fantastic for me it broke my hamster wheel so I, I i got out of the hamster wheel and i just totally stopped going after reviews and and it just gave me the push and the power to follow my heart to follow my road and to find things out for myself because uh, what the uh, impression i was getting from from reviews and from uh, people appraising stuff it i noticed that it doesn't work in real life and and just the idea to have uh, like upgrading your your parts this this tiny tiny system like this and you upgrade it towards this and that it's not necessarily uh, an improvement because uh, at the time when i heard the nautilus that was at a high-end show and there i did hear bigger bmw speakers i did hear the bigger rotor speakers and uh, all of them were a complete disappointment and why it was uh, I have to tell that the bigger BMW did present a lot more detail, a lot more resolution, a lot lower bottom end than the tiny BMW. The big rotors had way more power and uh, way more uh, resolution than that tiny NAD. Same thing for the big CD players, but the sound was falling apart. I with this system where was it this system i listened to music what was coming out of it was music and when i was listening to these guys at the show this this type of thing that was not music anymore it was some kind of uh, distorted sound yeah it had resolution it had lots of things in it but something was lost and at that time i did not understand what was lost from it now i know that it's the tonality the tone and timber that was completely gone and it's not re represented by these of at, at that uh, high-end show i also had the fortune to listen to electro company and that was the only room i think it was with martin logan's that uh, I liked compared to these uh, Rotel and BMW stuff and but even that was a very far cry from what I expected based on the reviews it was just a, a pretty good sound but not that good as the asking price was on the on the price tags to pay for this system and uh, curiously enough uh, the best sounding loudspeaker uh, of all the bmw and focals and and all of those that i heard at the show was the big brother of the dm302 the dm305 which is the floor standard version of this bottom basement loudspeaker and that played music and a little lower bass than this little guy but it was music. The rest of them, what I heard from the bigger brother Foca, uh, bigger brother BMWs and the Foca, was not music. It was just pure sound. And uh, and and then I noticed that a lot of audio, a lot of uh, high-end audio, is really about sound and not music. And while this little uh, baby system brought me close to music and this brought me to the heart of music then all of these type of equipment 
they, they left music completely out of the equation. It was just pure sound. And, but it still wasn't the worst because what I heard from the Nautilus... Uh, okay, I have to tell. The Nautilus room had the worst sound of the show. That was the worst sounding room. And why was it the worst sounding room? Well, we are at 25 minutes, so it will have to be at the next episode. So thank you guys for sharing uh, the beginning of my audio journey. I hope it was educational from ev for everyone. And have an amazing day. Bye-bye.